In this video, we are going to have a look at mixed calculations, including everything from the last few videos. Before we go and have a look at mixed calculations, it is important to remember that when adding and subtracting common fractions, you start off by determining the common denominator, then you form equivalent fractions, and then you add the numerators. When multiplying fractions, you multiply the numerators, and you multiply the denominators. And when you have a division sign, you will change it to multiplication and then multiply with the reciprocal. Then you also need to remember your order of calculations. Always first start doing the brackets, then you multiply and divide, and then you add and subtract. Let's go and have a look at some mixed examples. Example 1. Calculate the following. Here we have three fractions that should be subtracted and multiplied. When following the order of calculations, you first have to multiply and then you can subtract. So in my first step, the three quarters stays exactly like that and I now multiply. Minus one times one is minus one and two times three is six. Now I can subtract these two fractions. And to subtract, I need to get the common denominator. In this case, that will be 12. Next, I need to determine the equivalent fractions with a denominator of 12. So my first fraction, I will have 9 over 12. And in my second fraction, I will have minus 2 over 12. Now I can subtract the numerators, and that will be 7 over 12. Example 2. Here we now have multiplication, brackets, and inside the brackets we need to subtract. When following the order of calculations, we need to simplify the bracket first. In my step where I simplify this bracket, I am also going to already rewrite the first mixed number as an improper fraction. Inside the bracket, that is also my first step, to rewrite minus 1 and 2 thirds as an improper fraction. Now I'm going to continue by subtracting inside the bracket. To do that, I need to get a common denominator, and then my second fraction will have an equivalent fraction of minus 10 over 6. The 7 over 3 still stays the same, and my final step for simplifying the bracket is to subtract. So I will have 7 over 6. And finally, I can now multiply. So here I multiply the numerators to get 49 and multiply the denominators. Example 3. Here we now have two terms one with a square root and the other with a bracket squared. Even though, according to order of calculations, my first step is to calculate the bracket, I can, in that same step, simplify the first term by determining the square root. This can be done by determining the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. Now I can determine the bracket and the bracket is there because I need to apply a square. Firstly, I need to square the negative, and a minus times a minus is a plus. Then I square 2, and I square 3. In reality, I could have already left out the bracket. The reason that the bracket is still there is because we have two signs at the same term. So, a plus times a plus still stays a plus. Now I can add up these two fractions and that I do by getting a common denominator and here that will be 36. For the first fraction that means I need to multiply by 9 and the numerator will be 27 and for my second fraction I need to multiply by 4. Now I can finally add up the numerators.